I'm thinking today about a watercolor painting that a beginner could do that's not too difficult but that's going to give you some nice results. So what it's going to be is it's going to be a, a blue sky and then we're going to let that dry and come back and put some mountains over top of it and at the end we'll probably put a few evergreen trees in the front. So let's start with a, a blue wash. Um, first thing I want to do, if you have um, watercolor paints in pans or that you have squeezed from a tube out into a palette and it sat there for any length of time, uh, it, they're going to get dry. But watercolor can, can be re-wet. So take a spray bottle and wet them down. If you don't have a spray bottle, you can take a brush, get it wet, and drop some water on it. Spray bottle is a little faster. You just want to wet your paints and let them sit there for a few minutes. Okay, so in watercolor, gravity is your friend. This is um, an old applesauce container, and I'm going to put it under the top of my board so that it's at a slight slant. That way, when I get this board wet, the water is going to run all in the same direction, so it's at least predictably that it's running down. Now with watercolor, if you put watercolor on dry paper, it will stay where you put it. If you put it on wet paper, it's going to run all over. Once you put paint on the paper, the paper is then wet because we have to use water. Okay, so I'm going to get my brush wet and I'm going to dip into some blue. This is a cobalt blue. So you can see if my paint is wet, it comes up on the brush. I am going to get a nice big puddle here on my palette. That's dark enough so I'm going to add a little bit of water because I don't want it quite that dark. Um, a flat wash is difficult to do because with a flat wash you want the color to be even all over the paper. So we're going to do a graded wash which is actually easier. You can see I've got a big puddle of paper and I'm going to fill my brush with it. And then I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to go across. Need more paint so I'm going to refill my brush. There we go. I'm looking for this little bead of paint that's coming down here. That tells me that now I'm getting enough paint on. So and then I'm going to go down from there and after I've made a couple strokes across you can see because it's wet it's running down and becoming smooth. Now I'm going to just add some water. So I just added some water on the brush, and when that goes, so I'm going to rinse the brush this time, and I'm going to keep painting just with the water, and you see how the paint's getting lighter and lighter as it goes down the page. Here we are approaching the bottom. I can still see a small strip, a small little bit of the pigment coming down, so I want to wash all the way to the bottom, even though it's almost clear. Okay, now at the bottom, I'm going to get a paper towel. I'm going to rinse my brush, wipe a little bit of the water out of it. Then I'm going to take it and just pull it through the paper towel so that my brush is, we call it a thirsty brush because there's it's damp but there's less water in it than is on the paper. And I'm just going to touch it here to the very bottom edge of the paper and it's going to pick up any little bead of moisture that's down there. Now since I've had it on a slant, all the extra moisture has come to the bottom. And now that I don't have any extra moisture, I can take the applesauce container out and lay it flat and let this wash dry. Okay, the wash dried. I painted the first layer of mountains and unfortunately my camera ran out of memory. I'm still kind of a novice at this, but I'm going to do the same thing on the second layer that I did on the first layer. So you can go back and do the first layer. Okay, again wet the brush. This is completely dry. I know it's dry because I can feel it with the back of my hand and it is not cool. If it is cool it is still drying the water is still evaporating. So into my uh, blue paint, I'm going to add a little bit of red 
I did that last time and it turned it a little bit purple. I'm going to turn it a little more purple. Oh, that's good. So that gives me a little more pigment. The mountains are going to be darker and I'm going to make another layer. Again, I live in the east and so we get rolling mountains here. So a lot of paint on the brush. Fill up the brush completely and you do not want the mountains to go in the same direction, nor do you want them to go exactly opposite. So mountains are... Reload the brush. Just a layer of mountains. So there we go. Another layer of paint. Okay, I'm going to do one another line straight across. You can see I'm still getting that little bead of paper now. And now I'm... Excuse me bead of paint at the bottom. Now I'm just going to take water and again wash down so that I'm not getting any hard edges. I don't want it to go uh, too dark too quickly. I'm going to wash all the way to the bottom just like I did the first time. Make sure we don't have any light marks. Wet, dry space. Excuse me, make sure I don't have any dry spaces. Rinse the brush again, put it in a paper towel, just draw it through the paper towel to pick up the extra moisture, pick up any bead of paint that's on the bottom, and then I can let this dry. So now I have two layers of mountains. I'm going to continue letting this dry and doing a few more layers of mountains, and then we will come in and do the trees last. Okay, time for a third layer of mountains. Again, a little bit darker, so I'm going to add a little more blue this time, as well as a little bit of the red. So now I'm just getting a darker mixture. Every time I put a mixture on, it will be a little bit darker just because uh, watercolor is transparent. So let me do another layer of mountains here, and again, I'm just doing the same thing each time. Trying to make the mountains look different, of course, as you, they get a little closer. Make sure I get enough paint on the brush so that it forms this bead down at the bottom. Excuse me, as they get closer, they're going to get a little more jagged, a little rougher. That's a little too rough. Mountains don't normally have corners quite like that. Okay, make sure there's enough paint on there. Again, go across. And then paint, paint with water so that you get that graded wash and the paint fades down to nothing. Keep just painting with water straight across all the way to the bottom. This also gives you um, a little bit of look of mist in between the mountains when you come back in with a uh, darker line over top of something that's fading out. And then I'm going with a thirsty brush down here. I'm going to pick up this extra bead of water. I think next time I've got, let's see, I've got three layers of mountains here. Next time I'll probably come in with a greener layer and give you something closer up. So I'm going to let this dry again. i got to go quickly before I lose daylight here. Okay, I'm back now and this is dry again. So I think I'm just going to do this thing with a flat brush. So get it wet to this mixture. I'm going to add some yellow. I have blue in the mixture, so it's going to give it a little bit of a greenish hint, excuse me, a greenish hue here. So I'm going to add more blue, not much water more pigment and more yellow. And the red in there is going to dull it down just a little bit. There we go, so I have a dull green. And these are mountains that are closer up. So now I have to be thinking that you're going to start seeing the silhouettes of trees over here. So I'm 
mountain shapes, but you're going to be seeing some trees on it, especially on this top edge. I'm looking for that bead of paint at the bottom that's going to give me I'm going to keep this uh, edge from drying and you can add some more color to this mixture if you want so that it varies the, the green that you're getting. Add some more yellow in here. It's going to make this a little bit warmer over here. Yeah, keeping this Make sure with that little bead of paint that's coming down. You can touch in some of this color in other places also. And if it's wet, it's going to blend together. A little more blue in here. Go back to a little cooler mixture. So now I have a variety of colors in here. And get a darker color and I can just put in some more suggestion of trees down in here. Oops, I had water. Put in a strong mixture down here. It's going to look like a little some trees that are closer and the wash is going to washes are going to flow together. So Again, this is this is putting some in wet on wet. Oops, I got a brush hair in there. Okay, if you get a brush hair in there, just leave it alone. It will brush out. At the end. If I try to pick it out now, I'm going to have all kinds of marks in there. This actually didn't get as dark as I wanted, so what I'm doing is I'm putting some pigment directly on the brush. And I'm coming in here with some closer trees. That paint is fairly thick and it's going to take a little longer to dry. Um, if you want to, you can use a hair dryer or you can just wait and go do the laundry, do the dishes, get sidetracked, whatever. When we come back, uh, then I'm going to put the trees in the front. Okay, this layer is dry. There's that little brush hair. There we go. Pick it up. It left a little bit of a mark, but you know what? That's not going to matter. Okay. Again, with the flat brush, I'm going to get it wet. I'm going to come in here with my blue. I'm going to add some of my yellow to it. So there I have a nice green. Darker than that. There we go. This gold color. Okay, so if I want it even darker than that, I'm going to add a touch of the red. Not a lot, but red is the complementary color, so it's going to darken this up. There we go. Okay, so some evergreen trees. I'm going to put in a nice, Bob Ross would say, a nice happy tree right over here. He's going to go right from sky all the way down. So I've got my, my trunk and I'm going to use the corner of the brush and I'm just going to suggest 
his branches out here, trying not to put them all in individually. Should have mixed up more paint. Drop some of the new color in so that it's not in isolation. And take him off the bottom of the page. Now I am going to go and pick up a little bit of this red on the corner of my brush. Remember we talked about how red and green or complementary colors, it's going to make some of these areas darker in here near the trunk. And that's going to blend together because it is still wet. It looks very red now, but it will look better as it dries. Okay, so he needs a couple of friends on the other side. Again, a nice strong color, so the blue. I've muddied my yellow, but I will clean it up after the end of this painting session. Okay, so there's a slightly different green. Maybe this is a different type of tree. Uh, where's it going to be? I'll do the one on the end, so I'll give him a friend, and I'm going to start above the mountains. If I start above the mountains, it's going to give me something that is crossing over the entire area. I don't want to go right at the valley in that mountain, so again there's a trunk. Let's give him some different different type of branches. I don't want to get too dark in here. Again, I'm going to go off the page, and because this pigment is darker, there's more pigment in it, it's going to cover up the preceding layers. Okay. We can put Put some red in his trunk, and I'm going with the same red mostly because I've used that in the rest of the picture. So when I put it in wet, the colors are going to again blend. And I think we need another little one, so I need some more paint mixed up. Same mixture, a little different. Let's, let's make this one a little bit bluer. And we'll give him a little friend right in here. This one I'm going to tap on the side of the brush and leave it very open. You can also get, don't just paint with the end of your brush. You can paint with the sides. A little bit of open work there. A little bit of dark right in the trunk while it's wet. And there we go. So you're looking out over some mountains and you have a few little trees there. So there it is. It's a good start for a painting. Uh, I don't think it's anything that would sell in a gallery, but it will get you started painting with watercolor. Hope you enjoyed it.